Brethren and peace of the Lord once again. We, we are understanding that the Holy Spirit is doing something new in our midst and uh, it is a jump that's been given. We are having these 50 years that we have lived. They w were pinpointed by special mo moments. The doctrine was established and what happened in the past, see my brethren, this song has been sang right now. This is a song that is very old. So this is the history. This song was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The past brought us all the way to here. And there are few that still stay in this past. And the shout that was that is being given by the Holy Spirit is a shout of warning to those that were left behind. And I remember when we began the first days and our experience, it says the following. Do not haste. Don't be haste with those. Don't be concerned with those that left. Because my servants, I'm going to bring them into the church. But first, you need to uh, organize your home. So we needed to organize the house in order to receive the ones that were going to come because there were, were a few movements that were different. A movement of a, a revival. These moments, movements, they, they started out with not much care. The movement was, got lost only on the spiritual gifts. If you have spiritual gift, everybody uh, said everything that they wanted, they did what, whatever they wanted and in a certain way. The revival movement movement in Brazil tended tended just to be a Pentecostal movement. Uh, it's not a, a criticism on our part, but it's a service that it was a service that was without discipline, and we began to see that, in fact, in spite of uh, of the great revivals that happened during this time, the church was not able, the gospel was not able to grow stronger because there were two things that were important that happened. First was the body. So without the body, everybody do whatever they wanted. It was a movement. We were also just like them. And we, we, we thought that that was the right way to do it. But there was a need for organize. So the body needs to be organized. And an organized body, it has most importantly so there has to have something government and discipline. I remember that we used to have here the Manain, it was the beginning. There were a lot of difficulties without resources, but the people came. And, and there were a few difficult moments to keep everything under control because there were youth and adolescents and they, they did a great damage here in order to keep them under control was, was very difficult. And at, at a certain moment, a few of us felt like it was the, we were like uh, uh, dictators. People accused us of not having love. People used the word uh, love to protect them from everything. But in fact, there came a moment in which the situation got so difficult that I called a group of uh, brethren and I said the following. This is not for me. I have my professional life. I want to serve the Lord, but this here, if we, if we can't, if we don't have the means to discipline the people in order to have spiritual gift, in order to hear the voice of God, so then this is not for me. I'm going to another place, but I'm, I'm, I'm not able to to stay here. So it was a lack of government or discipline. There is nobody without government. There's nobody without discipline. And I was very, very disappointed and worn out because, in fact, saying no is the most difficult thing to say in the world. Everybody wants to say yes. Everybody says yes. There is a uh, a truckers driver everybody say yes it's all right 
And there's a text that said, men are like fish, like in Habakkuk. There's nobody to govern them. And today, when we look behind, we see only one thing. There is only government in the spirit, and to whom is in the in spirit. If you get out of the spirit, there's no government. But the people that are in the spirit, they are under government. So government is proper of the body. There's no body without government and without discipline. I cannot say, I say to the hand, hand, raise up, rise up, and then give a commandment to the central nervous system, and then the food goes up. No, no. So wax from the, the ear, instead of wax coming out of the ear, it's coming out of the, the mouth, and the saliva is coming out of the ear. So the, the body needs to have discipline. So the body needs to have discipline. So we, we begin to realize that the moments were coming to an end exactly because of this. They were faithful exactly because of the history that we lived. And it was not a criticism to them because we also went through this. So the ministry that receives the blessing and transforms it into sand. If you receive a pot filled with uh, gold dust and get mixed up with sand, when you play on the sand, then you lose it. So that's why our ministries are not professionals. So you see, my brethren, many things had to be adjusted. Until now, the adjustment came. So at that time, going back, there was this, this encouragement, and the Lord spoke to me. If you don't do what I want, put discipline here, the one who's going to be living here is going to be me. So then I stayed. Everybody else left. I put discipline there. There was no other way. So now I began to... I began to do what, what I wanted to do. I want the Lord to move us to something new and the Lord had for us. And now we can see that, in fact, He had something for us. So today we are going back to, we're turning our, heart, our hearts and our mind and understanding for something that is beyond what, what we left behind. So now leaving the things are left behind, and now we, we go to new things, right? So there was a moment in our life where we stop and rip all the papers and throw it to the garbage and then leave it all behind. So we came to this moment. We cannot continue speaking of a work of the Holy Spirit, saying that Jesus is coming, to, saying to everyone that Jesus is at the doors, but we we don't have the fellowship necessary to be participating in the rapture. So I want to speak about something that is very great importance. We have couples and some brought their children, some other didn't bring their children, but they are all here, they're family. And what is our greatest concern today? Sometimes I was at home on Thursday and somebody called me and said, I'm praying for you. And sometimes it's very common for us to say that we are praying to people. But in fact, what we are not doing, we're not doing according to what we understand prayer is supposed to be. Prayer is when you kneel down and pray for about this person, praying for A and B. We do this a lot at home again, for our family members and people very close to us. But those that are close to us, they are not our family members, that we have our hearts attached to them. When we have our hearts attached to our brethren, our feelings are geared towards them. That's the moment for the prayer. This prayer, sometimes I'm on the bus, I'm dr driving my car, I'm pleading, I'm pleading, I'm walking the street, I'm praying for my brethren, at that moment, uh, there is a brother that is sick, for example. So then I say, Lord, you know my heart. The Lord, sometimes you even cry to see the situation of a brother, of a, a child, whatever it might be. This is the prayer, a continuous prayer. You pray incessantly. Is the heart get turned to the project of God, which is in the body. This is very important. Sometimes we are praying and and sometimes we pray and say, 
God bless a person in emptiness. We are not really saying anything. And you, we are going to see today a couple of details that we need to fix up. So the heart, not for you, it's for you, for me, for everybody here, the heart that harbors anger. You cannot pray for anybody. If you are angry, you cannot pray for anybody. You know why? Hey, they took the chalk from here. Oh, they are putting it in the drawer. Oh, that's very good. The chalk is supposed to be in the drawer. So now, when you're praying for a person here, you are a body. You are transmitting life. So this relationship of a body here is fundamental. But the Holy Spirit <coughs> is the one who is in this relationship here. The, re the Holy Spirit is in this relationship here. And then anger is here. So now I ask you the first question. Is the Holy Spirit answering your prayer? Yes or no? No. But this has happened with many people who are here. It happens. It has happened. But it cannot continue. We're here. We cannot live like this. Sometimes a, s a simple argument that enters and may the sun not come down over your wrath. So it happens a lot with the couple. So the couple always, they have to pass by each other on a quarter and one come from each side and then the problem starts. So now the great problem is, is this, the Holy Spirit is in the situation here and between A and B. It's not possible to force the situation and, and to not to look at this. What your mouth is saying never goes up to heaven because the Holy Spirit is not accessory to the uh, anger, the evil that is harboring your life. If the evil that is harboring your life and is allowing you to speak with God and God is answering, where is the new birth? We are turning prayer into something common and prayer is much more than this that we learned in the past. Today, we are linked to a body. If you touched one, you touched everybody. We, s we know that our, uh, our church is, is something that is everybody knows because we have uh, this relationship. If the brethren cry for one another. This is what the Lord calls the Lord to hear our prayers. And when your heart is geared towards a project, so then that the law of the Holy Spirit, that's when the Holy Spirit enters and He prays for us. It's moanings, inexpressible moanings from the Holy Spirit. Those are expressions that you don't have and that the Holy Spirit has. He sees your heart and He sees your, your intention. If you are if your heart is right with me, then let's go together to the battle. So if your heart is not right with the Lord, then forget about prayer. Because when you open up your heart to pray for someone, the Holy Spirit looks towards your heart and says, Hey, wait a minute. The anger is harbored there. The vanity, presumption, the betrayer is there. So you know what happens? It turns back. The operation of the Holy Spirit doesn't happen, and the Holy Spirit doesn't is not going to pay attention. God is not responsible to answer to man's to go according to man's reasoning. Man's reasoning does not command what God wants to do. God does not go according to man's reasoning. God answers to the appeals of the Holy Spirit. So it's no use. There's no use. So vain words. It's no use. So you pray on the surface and they bless their brother is sick and everything. And on the on the other end, you are upset with that person. And people don't accept. Observe. I'm here. 
and a brother comes or come to the brother and say, you uh, apologize, I'm sorry, everybody makes mistakes, do you forgive me? And he answers, hey, everything's all right. And you say that, you say everything's all right, and it is not right. You didn't forgive your brother. He humbled, he fasted. How is it possible? What kind of heart is this? Is the Holy Spirit in sin this? What is the worth of your prayer? Three. From one to ten, your prayer is worth ten, three or five. The prayer should be worth ten. So no one, if you, the enemy is out there. You cannot embrace with the enemy and kiss the enemy. No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. We're speaking about the relationship with the body. If you have an enemy out there, he's criticizing you, you know that he's preparing a trap for you. <coughs> My brethren, the worst thing that exists in men, there's nothing worse than lack of gratitude. And normally, our experience is that throughout the years was this. Every time you gave a favor to someone, that person became your enemy. 90, you, did, you do 99 favors one, well, if you do a favor once, they think that you are responsible. You, you have the obligation to do the, all the other favors to them. But you forget that the mediator of, is the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is, is not in agreement with the ingrate, and it's not in agreement with your offenses. It's not in agreement with what is in your heart. You don't forgive. If you have a difficulty with someone, whether this person is close or not, try to avoid the continuity of this situation. But you cannot harbor in your heart the evil. So then you begin to pray and asking a bunch of things to God and He doesn't answer. And today what you see is the prayer of many people, they are not answered. And the plea, Lord, I pray so much and my son is not coming back to church and my wife is this. Because you want that God, that your own reason, determine the project of God. And that's not how it's going to go. Our understanding needs to grow in this aspect. Oh, we're not holy. Nobody's holy. But we need to know what is right and wrong. We cannot place the Holy Spirit at the disposal of our anger and our, of our presumption and our, and our e ego. No. Sometimes you have to speak up. There is a problem at home. Your father, your father, remain being a, a, a father. Keep doing the role of a father. A son made a direction, took a direction. Everything is all right. But you remain being a father, and the son will remain being a son and behaving like a son. So you have a, a, a father-in-law or a mother-in-law. They have to behave like a father-in-law and mother-in-law. Nothing can change. But people need to understand that everything has a limit. So we and the ministry is to begin to be at the ministry that is attached to this. There's no pastor that can uh, move the, the ministry forward. It has a problem at home. The wife doesn't like such and such people. This is something is is biblical. Does never despise the, the friend of a father. If you despise the friend of a father, you are an accomplice with the enemies of your father. There are no there's no reason. So the prayer has to be because you are the result of a prayer. You are home, everything's all right, you're sleeping. It's very common. A brother had a, a spiritual gift and we pray for your house, for your life. And he is not uh, thankful to God, not even to the brother. He doesn't care. My brethren, the world of spirits want to, to set that brother to pray. Fasting. Fasting. I'm going to make to fast for A and B and C. You don't give any worth. A spiritual gift on your behalf, the Lord has shown that you are going to, you can sign that document. I live off of spiritual gifts. I have a contract that is wrong. And people get upset with you. And I ask you, is this the life in the body? The closeness of the 
coming of the Lord Jesus is here. I'm not saying that in five years Jesus is coming. He's already arrived. He's about to arrive. No, we don't know the day or the hour. But the church needs to be closer to prayer because today the 50 years for us has shown what? Has shown that there is a time which the church suffered, cried, but was not only this five or three years in the past. No, the church has prayed for a long time and cried for a long time so that the enigma could be discovered. Wasn't it what the wife of Samson did? She cried all the seven days of the wedding because she was upset so that the enigma could be discovered, so that the enigma could be discovered. What was the enigma? The enigma that the world didn't discover. They did not solved. And the third day, nobody had to solve the enigma. Death and resurrection of Jesus. Death, oh, also I am for Jesus. They pray only on the, all the way to the death of Jesus. Everybody cried. But that's all right. There's no criticism. It is even beautiful when people get uh, emotional, sorry for Jesus. And in fact, what is important for us, we don't live off of the death, but we live off the resurrection of Jesus. So then there is a new understanding. It's not new, but it's an understanding that we need to live. We've been speaking about ministry, a living ministry, of a work that is alive. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is speaking. Spiritual gifts, operation of angels. Amen. My brethren, there are, is there something more amazing than for you to be on the middle of the street and the Lord giving you a vision of His presence? Is, is that something more amazing than you being in a, an airplane, uh, in a plane in trouble, everybody's desperate, and you Lord showing you an angel beside you, and angel saying, don't worry, you arrive safely. Is that something more amazing than? Is that something more amazing that you are being in the situation, and the Lord saying to you, today is your day? There's nothing more amazing than what God has done for us. So the prayer, see, is not something that moves through the mouth or to your voice. It is transmitted. It comes from eternity. It comes out of eternity. It moves on this path, which is not a material path. But it goes inside of a heart and establishes a relationship between you and God. And He wants to bless you. And they say, God wants to bless you. And yes, He wants to give a blessing, but it's not an imposition. He wants to give a blessing as your heart is ready to receive the blessing. So, see, my brethren, if you are sitting down here, you're praying for someone. Are you praying for someone? Right. Stop a little bit. What does the word say? You have a, a problem with your brother. Not even money. The Presbyterian and Manatha Church, the work of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, they don't want your money. They don't want. If you're upset with someone, go and resolve the problem first, and then you give your offer. That's why the the work of the Lord is been growing. Everybody is amazed how these people is growing. And that's why, because we only do this with a whole heart. It is not our obligation. It is you don't have any obligation to contribute. When was the day where we called for resources? Never. But what you do, moved by the Holy Spirit, my brethren, is what you, what the kingdom needs. Now, to say that He exists, there is no kingdom. A subjective kingdom. It is a kingdom that unites us. There is a king that is our, who is at our disposal. There is the movement of the Holy Spirit. It is a God Almighty. We're not seeing, if you're not seeing this, we're not seeing anything. You're just watching service, preaching, and go back. You're saving lives. You're getting rich. That's all right. We're living a moment in which you need to revise many things. And there is one of the most important things that need to be reestablished immediately. And now we are having this conversation with the brethren here far away from the children speaking about this fix this up in your home Lord my bread there's nothing better than this than to understand that 
what somebody is doing for you is not because you deserve it. It's the Holy Spirit that is dictating to that person, a humble person, simple person. He's praying for your life. We are not paying for anything. He is paying the price. There's nothing more amazing than a church in prayer. We had a couple of days ago. What have we had? It was result of prayer. Oh, no, because this person is good, because that person is sick. Oh, that's all right. Everything is all right. But look, if the hand of the Lord, if the prayer is not before the author of the Lord, nothing will happen. Vanity will come, presumption will enter, and an individual will end up being very proud, what is, what is greater? Is this and what is out there? No, this is what we sh need to choose. Because here we are in the presence of the Lord. We are there or anywhere we are. But here we are inside of our own home, outside. My brother, if there is no prayer of the people of God, there is no doctor, there is no smart person, there is no great speaker, nothing. Nothing will happen like what we've seen. The presence of the Lord in a place that you never imagined. In the moment, the worst moment in the history of our people of Brazil. But what was the result of this? It was the people united in prayer. But the prayer has to start inside of our homes with the family. The brethren, why are you angry against your brother. What did he do? He slapped you? I didn't want to be slapped by anybody. I'm even afraid of, of thinking about this because man has their own reaction, right? But but the word of the Lord shows and our appeal, our word at this moment and this that in a minute, uh, I, a conversation with Abraham is this. You have something against. It's not worth it. Whoever fought for us, those who defended us, we should not, they should not be despised. They didn't cry for a man. They didn't cry for a person. They cried for a work of the Holy Spirit. They unite us, my brethren. There is no greater pride than this. If there is pride in this, this situation of holiness, there is nothing else. There is nothing else more amazing than to know that we are inside of our home. Today we have our children who are here. We are going to unite. We are going to continue this battle. But the greatest battle is the battle of prayer. Knowing the phone, that we cannot, should not, ask uh, for things for our house when we despise your brother, when you despise the small one. When I say the small, so I'm not talking about the poor. But poor is social condition. Social condition for us is, is not important. Poor is the one who is always at God's feet. And the word of the Lord says the following. There are many that think they are rich and have nothing. And those that have nothing, but they are rich. We want those that have nothing and they are rich. And those who have money but turn themselves into poor. This is the initial appeal in this period that we are here. We'd like to have this, all our brethren. My brethren, the world will see one thing. They're not going to see a church, a worldly church, seeing millions of people, millions, no, but he's going to see a witness. And you know where the witness is? Ten church in Israel. Nobody has it. How many here went to Israel to evangelize there? You can raise your hand. Pleading for the blood of Jesus inside of Israel. I ask you, my brethren. Oh no, the church was. Uh, I'm going to go to United States, Russia, and in England say, oh, our church. You need to accept Jesus because the church was uh, started and and. The Spirit of Santo. No. Who founded? I know many people who sank the church instead of founding the church. But who 
I know how many many people who sank the church, but the one who founded the church is the Lord Jesus. My brethren, you know, you want a situation. There is no excuse for it. It is the Holy Spirit. Allow the Spirit to act. Open up your heart and say, Lord, that's what we're going to, to do. Precious, precious, uh, going to sing, precious are your works. You're not going to pay for others. Pray for yourself now. Oh, I have an enemy. I'm going to pray for my enemy. No, no, don't do this. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. That's it. A minute. Pray now. Stay in the presence of Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to operate. I spoke to you and your hearts contrite at this moment they confess to me and I hear you in this day adore my name be therefore with this feeling that I'm giving you at this moment to live in fellowship adore my name with shouts of glories and alleluias because this meeting was a great victory. Do according to on your heart what the Spirit taught and shocked you. Each person examine themselves. Now, only the flute and the instruments are going to play softly. I saw the brethren that had thrown stones over someone. And this word. And there were stones that were stumbling blocks to other people. And the Lord was saying to this bread, Servants, clean up the path. It's time to pick up the stones that have been thrown.
tirava a pedra. E eu tirava as pedras, os caminhos iam se abrindo. The stones were being removed and they received great deliverance because the words, their own words, in which they were, were stumbled on, and the, the Lord was cleaning up the path of many of them. And I saw a couple of brothers who were here that received stones that were thrown at them. And it is interesting that those brethren, they were carry a, a bag with stones because each stone they received, they put on this bag. And a couple carried a, a, a bag filled with stones and the, the bag was heavy. But while the pastor was teaching, I saw an angel enter into the midst of the brethren and he went to the brethren that were collecting offenses and he said the following, give me the bag of stones. Uh, the Lord is going to deliver you from, from your uh, offenses and the brethren crying gave the bag with the stones and I saw the gr grace of the Lord over them. And the word regarding the stones is not something specific to a single person, to the pastor, to a brother, to a government, whatever it might be. But it is about the small things on, on our daily life at home and those to do favors to us, praying for us. A glass of water that you give someone to a small one, it is worth in eternity. Now, another vision. I saw that as the word is being ministered, we knelt down and we began to plead to the Lord. We wanted to cry. And I noticed that in our hands, a few had handkerchiefs and others had their hands. And we opened up our eyes. We thought it was drops of tears, but it was actually a drop of blood. It was a blood mixed with oil. But it was not our blood or our oil, a oil that came from us. But when we looked and realized what this blood came from, our tears began to come down. It was, it was a cleansing that was happening in our lives. The Lord also has given a vision. And I saw the homes of the brethren. The brethren came here and everyone had in their hands patches of a linen, white linen. That, was twi that were twisted and those patches of linen, the brethren used to try to cover the homes and protect their homes and the children but it was never insufficient. A few children were uh, cold, unprotected, and couples, but during the class, it was given to the brethren a scarlet string, and I was able to see that was the scarlet string was of living blood, and the brethren put together the, the patches of linen, and at the end of the class, they were sewn, a, a, a large sheet and the families were protected and warmed and during the class came down over us a dew of oil we didn't see it but at the end of the class I noticed that the brethren went with their hands to the head and their hand were all filled with oil and we didn't clean up the oil and we took this with them with us and I saw in the vision the result of this is that in the greeting when you go and shake the, your brother's hand and you would say peace of the Lord the first blessing is for you and that edified when you go and extend your hand as a result of the this do over us. Another vision. Glory to Jesus. Another vision. My brethren, the Lord has given a vision during the message that the Lord has shown a couple of situations. He's shown a couple where the man was greeting his wife with the shaking of hand and he was hoarding the hand of his wife. The wife was very quiet. She never said anything, but said anything. But she was crying a lot. But she was not criticized. I don't know. She was afraid. 
So her hands were uh, very much wounded. There was instruction from the Lord to them saying that the man needed to put oil on his hand in order to greet his wife. And he was a very resistant to it, but uh, followed the instruction and put oil on the hand. And when he greeted his wife, it was a soft greeting. And also another couple, the Lord was showing the following, that they discussed a lot and didn't, didn't understand why their teenager son was growing crowed spiritually. But it was think, because of their relationship. And this teenage kid was paying attention to everything that was happening. And they didn't think that the kid was paying attention, but he was. The kid didn't, didn't want to go to church anymore. They fasted, nothing happened. But the problem was between them. And the third couple, the Lord is showing that they even go on early dawns and they fasted and did everything. But, but uh, they always criticized the pastors inside of their house. That's why the prayers were never answered. And the Lord has shown that came angels to the Lord this afternoon. And they came here. And the order the Lord was to, for the angels to touch on these couples who are here, on these homes. Because it was a great deliverance that the Lord was doing this afternoon. And when the angels touched on those couples, they were transformed because there was deliverance. And they were going to leave this place in the seminary like they never been before. They will leave this place different. It's not a new phase for these families. Very softly. It's going, we're going to sing, uh, Search Me, O Lord. The Lord has already searched our hearts, and now we're going to adore the Lord. Uh, thankfulness in our heart, reminding of one thing. There is no child that may not pay attention for the smallest it might be the disagreements of a couple or the house or the family there's no kid that does not pay attention and later on much later on you see the result I said something and I want to repeat here the words set aside two things for the child the cemetery and prison or the child goes to one or to the other. That's all. And we, we, can, we cannot see our children in our situation. We are, we are waiting for the children to arrive. And while they enter, we're going to sing another song, which is going to be the finishing of this service today with the children. They can enter and they can come to this place. Happy Heart, that's the song that we're going to sing now. Amen. Received a, a transmission by a satellite of an event that happened in Brazil. But we know that for the Holy Spirit, it doesn't exist time or place. 
and our God is um, all-knowing and He's and uh, omnipresent. And where there are two or three gathered in my name, there He will be. The gift that were delivered, the message that was transmitted this morning, I believe that spoke to each one of us here. Amen. This is a message of the Holy Spirit for each one of the, His servants. The church is the body of Christ. And it is in all the tongues, peoples, and nations. The spiritual gifts that were delivered and the prophetic message, the f last few gifts of the couples, couples, there sometimes the couple of, of snakes right <laughs> we're not snakes we're sheep and we have a, a shepherd we have a guide we have a lord we have a god that love us a desire to take us to his home to his house to his eternity like the children said before to give us the joy of being in the house of the Father. Amen. Let us stand up. Let us pray for our children. And then we're going to say goodbye to the church with the apostolic blessing. And Pastor Ronil is going to pray for the children. Let us God bless him to our children, Lord. Let us you continue taking care of each one of them. And the teaching that was given to them this morning. The teaching is being given through the teachers, through the parents, that it may remain in it with, within each heart, that may produce fruit, Lord, and that they may grow in the, in the stand of your word. Protect them from evil, from any sickness, that may have a growth according to your will. That it may be a blessing, whatever they pass by. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say the wonderful grace of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, love of, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, brethren. The church may be seated. I want to remind the brethren that the next Sunday, we're not going to be here. This coming Sunday, the Church of Hollandale, the brethren from the region of Orlando, of other parts of the country, they're going to be there together in the seminar that is going to happen in Port St. Lucie. 8 o'clock for registration and 9 o'clock for the offering of the fasting and then. Uh, we're going to have the classes are going to be revealed by the Lord and the closure is going to happen between 5 and 6 o'clock and we are go not going to have the service at night here. So the next few service, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday. So if a few brethren have not registered, there is still time. If there is any visitor here, I'm going to be calling you, the visitor, my brother. If you want to participate, it's going to be an honor to receive you here in this bless, this event in Port St. Lucie. There is no transportation. The brother is saying here that he is already provided. Amen. I'm waiting to see you all there. Peace of the Lord.